Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for joining us on this channel. We try to have some good old outboard fun. Um, I had a question in my last video. A fella asked me. Do you stay hung over so much that's why you always drink this water? I drink this beautiful, fresh tasting Alaskan water. I buy a bottle whenever they start getting pretty ratty. Then I fill it from my sink. They say that's not good to do, but that's what I do anyway. Because the water we have coming out of these hills around here is deliciosus. You understand us? I speak of the Spanish. But I will give you an answer um, to your questions. And uh, the reason why is I take a medication called hydro, as in water, hydrochlorothorazide. I take that in conjunction with lisinopril to keep my blood pressure numbers in check. And hydrochlorothorazide, also known as a water pill, it dehydrates you, makes you thirsty. Hence, good, clean, out of these specific hills, water. I have to drink a lot of it. My doctor told me that's what I'm to do, so I shall do that. Plus, I like good fresh water. I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Simon up in Pennsylvania. He was stationed up here with me back in, I think, around 87. Um, the book. Leaving the Amish. Like I told you, he's from Pennsylvania, and uh, if you're not familiar with that state too much, there is a large uh, Mennonite Amish uh, type population up there in and around uh, Lancaster and uh, Liverpool, that area up in there. But uh, he wrote a memoir book, and guess who's in this book? Well, it ain't Fret. There's quite a bit about some stories and adventures that him and I did together. Um, I make no... He sent me this, signed it for me, and sent me this, which I really appreciate, Sim. And... It is available on Amazon. So if you want to read a little bit about some of the annex I had in my younger days in here, in this book, um, it's in there. And so, um, however, he doesn't use my Cody name. But you should be able to figure out who he's talking about, when he's talking about it. Knowing what I do, seeing what you've seen what I do. You understand. So, available on Amazon, Leaving the Amish. He grew up Amish, and he tells about the trials of, of leaving the family proper. Uh, um, Amish family, Amish group. Um, and then he talks about the struggles he had to get in the military, and he was a fish and game officer. Just a good read. And it's got somebody in there you might know. So, if you like to read, pick it up. Now, so, what are we going to do here today? It's a little windy out today. Not too bad. But, I'm going to make one last stab. And that's a good way of putting it. At this little ugly duckling thing. It'll be, and this will be the last stab. 
I'm going to try a third lower unit and a complete different drive shaft and that I will show you and if I still get that whiny grindy is to the bone pile I hate to do it but what they say three strikes you're out so that's what I'm gonna do so there is the lower unit that I just took off now keep in mind this would be the second lower unit that I've tried and I put some blue paint on on this one so I know it's the one that was in there now there is a little bit of interest in something on that right in here it you know it looks heated and then it's got a pretty deep can you see that it's like a, a score and a gouge and this is the this one has the rubber o-ring I got anti-geese on there so you, you really can't see it because I put the anti-geese but you know other than some discoloration I sight down it like a you know a shotgun barrel or whatnot a rifle and it looks straight as can be and I can only go by you know how it rolls on my garage floor I mean it's straight it, this thing is not bent now there is some discoloration and stuff but and that little groove there I don't know but anyway I went out to my pile and I got this one and you know that's where I had some tape see I had I had the shift short shift rod tape taped here um, but this one looks a whole lot better in this area here but it also is not the kind that has the o-ring now you can still put an o-ring on there but I, I really don't think it would do any good I'm gonna pop one on there but I don't know you know without that groove to go in and you can see it's it, these are longer but it is it's my understanding that all these lower units that go in either style this style the, the ones just like that one that have the o-ring slot all the way up into even the new high profile 9915s they all take this they will all interchange every one of them that i know of and so this one you know when i took that one out This latch ain't the strongest in the world. What is that? Anyway. There. I mean, this goes in there easily. Um, and when I pulled that one out, just like when I pulled this one out, now that was up in the spline. And when I shine up in there, you can't see it, but I have both a scope and just a flashlight. And I see no rust or anything on the splines. And when all these lower units came off of here, they came off easy. I didn't have to pound them or, you know, they, they all came out relatively easy. So, um, this is a good looking drive shaft. I see nothing wrong with it. And it is the same length as you can see. Let me get them lined up. They are the same length. 
So, I'm going to, and I, I, I'm going to even go get another lower unit. And so it's going to go with a different lower unit and a different short drive shaft. And we'll see what happens. Okay, I've got the lower unit off. I put it back kind of in the tank and I spin it over. You can see how easy that spins. There's no, no binding, no nothing. So, here's my newest candidate. I'm going to take that water pump off and that shift rod out and that drive shaft out and put the new short one in there. I've already checked it, it shifts, goes in and out of both gears. So let me get that off. Um, yeah, I don't... Oil looks pretty dirty in there, but there's oil in there. Brand new impeller. So we will slide it down. And hopefully right on. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Okay, I put this lower on here. I hooked up the shift link. I'm in neutral, you can see. I go to forward. I can spin it over. Back to neutral, I guess. No. Something ain't right. Well, there's neutral. Okay, I was in reverse. Yeah, that's reverse. There's neutral. And there's forward. But when I when I'm in forward, I feel that grinding. Leave. Well, I'm going to do the test with the, uh, let me see, put it neutral. Reverse. See? I don't really feel that grinding in reverse. Interesting. Let me, uh, there's neutral. Let me spin it over with the drill. on there and see what we're going to get. That's in neutral. Let's go forward. It's not doing it as bad as it was. <coughs> but it's still there. 
there's still something not right there.
Wanted to show you something uh, kind of cool to me it's cool anyway um, I guess back in the 60s 70s I think I've even seen them up into the 80s um, I've got I've got several out here right now probably five or six of them uh, Johnson Evinrude tiller operated outboards normally in the 25 to 35 range but I think I've seen them on smaller too but um they'll show up in here and they have this on the end of the tiller handle like I said I've got some out there right now I can show you an example of that all right so I've got several outboards that have this on it but I've never seen um the other piece that goes to this and I'm still wondering if they made several different but anyway finally off the old inner tube I found this this is made by Gills Outboard throttle extension handle made by Right Fit Manufacturing Company, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and then a patent number. Gills, G I L S. This is the device. It's got a spring loaded button. You push that, it pops into the hole right there and then it has holes I guess you put a, a bolt and a wing nut or a little keeper you know keeper clip pin or something but there it is made by am I holding it up right yet gills but that I've been looking for one of these for a long time just to see what what they are and uh, how they work and all and there it is the gills extension just thought you might like to see it and here it is on the uh, on an outboard this is that piece the buttons over here somewhere right there this one's stuck but that extension just snaps right on there and then you got you an extension there's like I said I have like five or six of those around here I've always wanted to find that other piece well I found it well very interesting on this little ugly duckling motor um, so where am I at and what am I gonna do um, well I just kinda put the coils and pack and such in the car back on there to see what I got with it running and I'm still getting that whining noise it doesn't seem like it's as bad as it was with the other um, drive shaft but I can still feel it you can still hear it um, so what does it mean well the bottom line it means it's parts um, I could not sell this motor with it 
you know, running like that and making that noise. Something is amiss, and it's a head scratcher because here's what's got me puzzled with it. I tried three different lower units, two different drive shafts. So if it was a crank bearing, say the lower crank bearing or the lower or the, the center crank bearing or whatever, I would think it would make the noise regardless of whether there was a drive shaft stabbed into that crank. Maybe not necessarily so. Um, just putting it under that, you know, where everything's compressed together, if, if there's some bearing play in one of those bearings or a journal scored or something like that, that may be enough to create that whining noise. But it is puzzling that if I take the lower unit off and start the power head, you hear no noise, it seems to run fine. Put a lower unit and I get the whining and it doesn't seem uh, to run as well with the lower unit on it also so but the bottom line I could not sell this to a, a customer uh, I, I just wouldn't do it so um, at this point it's gonna go to the parts pile um, now I'm debating and I think I will I'll pull the power head back off and everything because I got a brand new base to power head gasket on there. I'll pull the T-STAT out, T-STAT cover gasket because, well, I'll just, I might just leave that because I know what's in there and I can get it any time. But uh, brand new water pump impeller in there and you can see it thing pees really strong. So the grommet, you know, when I had it all apart, I checked them, trimmed them and all that. So she's got good water flow, but there's that noise and I can just by turning it over by hand I can feel there's a little I don't know how to describe it well um, it, it's there's a I guess grinding is the best I can just feel it when I turn the flywheel something doesn't seem right but uh, it's got to be internal it, it's got to be something internal so after I pull this power head um, and a video or two down the road uh, I'll tear this engine apart and we'll look inside them innards and we'll look inside the innards and pull the guts out of it and see what we got because it's it's really a head scratcher because um, but this is how this is one of the worst kind of motors because it, 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 it sucks you in because that power head ran good with the lower unit off and uh, and it, you just go further and further and further down the rabbit hole and at some point you got to, you got to give in the goat in this case it was a sheep and a cow but you got to give up the sheep and the cow because this thing something is amiss and could I you know keep messing with it and maybe get it to even with the wine and noise run halfway decent probably but I'm not going to because the only reason I would even want to mess with this motor is to flip it and sell it. So, and I can't do that with good conscience. So, it pees, it shifts, it runs. But it's going to the pile. So, I've got another motor that I've been wanting to get to. Um, just to get it out of my shop here. I've got a little Honda over here that I've had sitting in this shop for over a year and I finally went and scrounged up all the parts and I'm going to probably do that one next and uh, but that is a wrap on the ugly duckling fitting Johnny Roo. Didn't come out like I wanted to. Sometimes it goes like that so there you go. That is certainly a long extended hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are a coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.